Hello viewers, welcome to the Dateline Northeast, a program that gives an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I am your host Chandra Kala and the highlights of today's program are Rajnath Singh holds review meeting on Indo-Bangladesh border security issues. Young soccer midfielder from Mizoram sets new par in football. Loyalun Festival held in Nagaland to revive backstrap weaving. And Manipur's 14th Orange Festival promotes organic farming. In a major move towards development and issues concerning the border states that has been largely affected by insurgency and other related crimes, Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh chaired a high-level review meeting on Indo-Bangladesh border security issues along with the chief ministers of five eastern states at the West Bengal Secretariat in Kolkata. He also made his maiden visit to northeastern province of Nagaland. A report. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh chaired a crucial meeting with states sharing border with Bangladesh at the West Bengal Secretariat in Kolkata. During the meeting, Chief Ministers of State of Assam, Mizoram, West Bengal, along with the officials of Tripura and Meghalaya, were present and held review of Indo-Bangladesh border issues concerning the states that share an international border with a neighboring country. Ensuring the security in Indo-Bangladesh border, Singh said, people residing in border areas are very important for us and they are our strategic assets. Apart from maintaining cordial relations with them, there should be proper development in border areas. With development taking its pace, maintaining border security is our priority. Seeking solution to control illegal migration, armed infiltration, cattle smuggling and other related crimes were also discussed during the meeting. Apart from this, unfolding of Rohingya refugees crisis in neighboring Bangladesh was also discussed. Singh also emphasized on the much-needed fencing in the border areas to avoid any kind of infiltration. 1,090 kilometer border is fencing nahi hui hai. Wahan par hum logon ne decision liya hai technological solution ka prayog karenge, jise hum non-physical barrier kehte hain. Uske dwara is border ko cover karenge. और नॉन फिजिकल वैरियर्स ऐसी जगहों पर होंगे जहां पर कि फेंसिंग और रोड्स ये बनाना अथवा फेंसिंग करना ये फिजिबल नहीं है वहीं पर इस प्रकार के नॉन फिजिकल वैरियर्स यानी टेक्नोलॉजिकल सॉल्यूशन इसका उपयोग करेंगे अब नॉन फिजिकल वैरियर्स में डेलाइट कैमरास हैं सेंसर्स हैं रडार्स हैं लेजर्स हैं यह सब शामिल है Stressing the need to prevent entry of illegal migrants into the country, Rajnath said, although we have a friendly relation with Bangladesh, we must be prepared for every eventuality. We should be vigilant enough to make sure that Bangladesh land is not used for their activities against India. Addressing the media, Singh also urged the states to remain alert on the Rohingya issue. He also informed that out of 4,096 kilometers long international border running through five states, 3,006 kilometers of border security infrastructure is currently in place and work on the remaining 1,090 kilometers is yet to be started. North East में इस insurgency का जहाँ तक सवाल है, इस पर काफी हद तक हमलोगों ने काबू पा लिया है, लेकिन कुछ insurgent groups सीमा पर बंगलादेश में वो पनाह लिए हुए हैं। और हम बांग्लादेश में क्योंकि हमारी ये फ्रेंडली कंट्री है इसलिए इसकी मदद से इस ग्रुप की पर पूरी तरह से हम लोगों की नजर है इनकी एक्टिविटीज पर बॉर्डर सिक्योरिटी के लिए बॉर्डर पर फिजिकल और नॉन फिजिकल बैरियर्स के साथ साथ बॉर्डर प्रोटेक्शन ग्रिड के कॉन्सेप्ट को भी लागू करने का हम लोगों ने फैसला किया है Thereafter, Rajnath Singh also visited Timapu city in Nagaland and in a major trust towards development, inaugurated a swimming pool and NP Tapa Indo Sports Complex of the Assam Rifles Training Center and School at Sokovi near Timapu. He also interacted with the Assam Rifles Shawans and got to experience anti-insurgency and jungle welfare maneuvers and combat survival skills during his itinerary. Moreover, a demonstration of small team operations for conducting raids on insurgent hideouts and counter-ampoos trails was also organized during the occasion. 
इस तरीके का एक ड्रिल मैंने देखा टनल से पास होते हुए और वैसे मैंने देखा है पुरुषों को भी टनल से पास होते हुए यह डेमो इसके पहले भी मैं देख चुका हूं अब मैं बहुत गौर से बात कर रहा था जो महिलाएं टनल से पास हो रही थी और कटी ने तारों के नीचे चिलकल रही थी तो मैं यह एसेस करने की कोशिश कर रहा था कि स्पीड क्या है उनकी और साथ ही साथ मैं चेहरे की तरफ भी मैं देख रहा था एक सेंस ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस एक विश्वास का भाव एक आत्मविश्वास सचमुच इसे मुझे बेहद खुशी हुई है Singh also complimented the Assam Rifles for their bar excellence, professional commitment, and appreciated the efforts of the force in combating counterinsurgency in the entire Northeast, and asserted that 70 to 80 percent insurgency has come to an end. It is a big achievement for all. The Home Minister spoke about some welfare initiative for soldiers that have been implemented for the force. During his maiden visit to the hill state of Naglan, Singh also reiterated that the central government is committed to fulfill the aspirations of the Naga people for a brighter tomorrow. A two-day ASEAN-India Connectivity Summit was held in New Delhi on the theme Powering Digital and Physical Linkages for Asia in the 21st Century to improve and enhance connectivity of India, specifically the Northeast region with Southeast Asia under its ACTUS policy. The event was attended by delegates from all the ASEAN countries. Boosting bilateral ties, developed infrastructure, improving connectivity and inland waterways remained the major criteria of discussion in the recently held ASEAN-India Connectivity Summit. The event comes ahead of the visit of leaders of the 10 member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations next month for the commemorative summit of 25 years of the Indian-ASEAN Dialogue Partnership. Organized by Confederation of Indian Industries in collaboration with ASEAN India Centre, the summit focused on promoting sea, air and road connectivity projects with ASEAN. Emphasizing on the role of Act East policy, the summit highlighted on the growth of both physical and digital connectivity as it is the core factor for improving ASEAN India relations. At a time when we are uh not looking east but acting east this is the most important part of that acting east till that time we are not connected physically digitally culturally we are already connected but i think there's more connect required uh, the connectivity will not really happen until the connectivity doesn't happen the type of uh, ecosystem that we want to create with asean will not happen during the summit, regional cooperation like transforming Northeast India, action at the level of individual countries was also sought to solve various challenges like inadequate cross-border infrastructure links, constraints in movement of goods, barriers to FDI faced in doing business efficiently. If these challenges are addressed more vigorously, the ASEAN India Connectivity Master Plan towards building connectivity with focus on the line of credit as well as on financing infrastructure can be fulfilled. Stressing on the augmentation of trade through inland waterways, road, etc., the summit also shed light on various developmental projects initiated by the centre so far. The Northeast part of विशेष रूप से आसाम का और नॉर्थ ईस्ट का वहाँ से हम करीब 25,000 किलोमीटर की 2,000 किलोमीटर की रोड लेंथ को हमने सागरमाला में लिया है और ये रोड कनेक्टिविटी जो है वो जो एशियन कंट्री जो है उसके लिए विशेष रूप से उपयोगी है तो उसमें हम लोग म्यांमार तक हाईवे बना रहे हैं आगे बैंकॉक और वियतनाम तक हम जा पाएंगे तो रोड कनेक्टिविटी भी हमारे लिए हमारे बिजनेस के लिए बहुत उपयोगी होगी Asserting that connectivity is the pathway to shared prosperity, Gutkari informed that various connectivity projects such as the India-Myanmar-Thailand Trilateral Highway Extension to Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam, Kaladan Multimodal Transit Transport Project are being planned and are at different stages of implementation. The summit drew attention of the ASEAN Indian industries on projects that aim to develop river connectivity and seaports to enhance trade and commerce. Dredging work has already been started in Brahmaputra River to get connected to the ASEAN countries for smooth running of business. We are making three multimodal hubs, 40 river ports, 9 ferry services, 8 rural services. We have already started the work in 
repair of Haraka water gate and we are maintaining the draft of 3 meter from Varanasi to Haldia. Now after Haldia, we are now connected to Brahmaputra. We have already started work in Brahmaputra. Even we are taking decision to make grazing in Bangladesh and we are spending 250 crores for that. And after Bangladesh, for Brahmaputra, we can go up to the Myanmar. The most important thing is related with our northeast states and Assam. It is very important. And for our trade and business also, it is equally important. The summit was attended by delegates of ASEAN countries, including Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. Next, we have Mizoram, one of India's hill states, has started to turn into a hub of budding footballers. Following the footsteps of many celebrated soccer players of the region is midfielder player Lalang Moy, who represented India during the recently concluded FIFA Under-17 World Cup. With Aizol FC returning as champions of the I-League 2016-17, there can be no denying that Mizoram is the powerhouse of soccer in the region. Another feather in the cap for Mizoram is a 17-year-old midfielder, Lale Muay, who had represented the country and was loan representative from the state at the recently concluded FIFA Under-17 World Cup. His love for soccer began when he was only four years old, playing alone with his elder brother. However, he officially entered the world of soccer when he was selected for the under-football Shubroto Cup team from his school at the age of 10. I used to play with my brother in our local field, five ground field, and uh, without uh, normal coaches and with our, uh, we are just playing with our local friends. Uh, after that, when I am around 10 years old, I got selected to be in Sports and Youth Services Department Academy under, uh, for Subroto under 14. Since then, there has been no turning back for Lale Moai and he has been in the fray, playing for various football clubs both in state and national level. After this World Cup, uh, I will be joining Pylian Eros for I-League. And I want to thank the AIFF for taking care of us and giving good exposure to you. Lale Muay is now considered as one of the most talented youth prospects of the country. He has now started his journey towards becoming a professional player with an ultimate aim to play regularly at senior level. Lovingly called Mapui by his friends and family, Lale Muay is well known among his friends for his hard work. Hey, Tuna, Mizoram, Iowa, World Cup player. Masaber, Kelte, Masaber, Kanzi Matankanehi, Alamonga Dilea, Amapuehi, Mitumrutan Nigashia. Lale Moe polished his skills and techniques at the All India Football Federation Elite Academy and is now raring to make his mark in the world of football. Lali Muay truly is the embodiment of inspiration and has set a benchmark example to the people in the region, especially the youngsters to dream high and achieve their dreams through hard work. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. Recently, Meghalaya Chief Minister Dr. Mukul Sangma laid the foundation stone of Shillong Medical College at Reed Chest Hospital Maoba in Shillong. The medical college will be fully equipped with modern facilities that would provide better medical services to people of the state and meet the shortage of medical professionals. In a move to give proper health care service to people, Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren recently distributed a monetary assistant worth Rs 1.1 crore to 91 selected beneficiaries under the Manipur State Illness Assistance Fund in Imphal. The beneficiaries were selected from among the applications received in between December 15, 2014 to February 2015. 
The chief minister said that the government provided medical reimbursement up to rupees 1.5 lakh to below poverty line families for medical treatment under MSIAF. For people suffering from critical diseases like cancer, the scheme would provide a cashless medical cover up to rupees 2 lakh per family. Recently, soccer lovers from Guwahati city and elsewhere gathered at the Indira Gandhi Athletic Stadium and saw Northeast United FC go against Bengaluru FC at the fourth season of the Hero Indian Super League 2017-2018. Scores of NU FC's fans with their faces painted were seen lined up outside the venue. Meghalaya's Garu community recently celebrated one of the biggest post-harvest festivals of the state, Wangla Festival at Asana Grave Village, 17 kilometers from Tura. People from various areas in the state and elsewhere gathered and witnessed the mesmerizing 100 drums Wangla traditional dance, which was showcased by the dance troops led by the village chieftain. The Unison 100 Drums Dance remains the centre of attraction of the festival. The festival consists of various Thanksgiving rituals, followed by merrymaking, dance and traditional songs and music. Meghala Sports and Youth Affairs Minister Zenit Sangma grace the closing ceremony of the festival. Well, skill development in India's northeast region tops the priority list of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. Over the years, various skill development projects aimed at ensuring progress of the region's youths have been initiated. In yet another step in that direction, the region's first skill development institute was inaugurated by India's skill development minister Dharmendra Pradhan in Guwahati. We have a report. Since Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched his flagship Skill India program and stressed on the need for a youthful and skilled manpower, various projects have been rolled out to achieve the objective across the country. To tap the full potential of the region's youth, a Skill Development Institute was recently launched in Assam's Guwahati city by in Skill Development Minister Dharmendra Pradhan and Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonwal. पूर्वी भारत विशेष करके पूर्वोत्तर भारत देश की बाकी हिस्से से आगे नहीं जाएगा समान में नहीं कह रहा हूं आगे लाना पड़ेगा नॉर्थ ईस्ट की नौजवानों को कभी हम दुनिया में कहीं मिलते हैं देश के कहीं कोई सेक्टर नहीं है मेडिकल हो मेडिसिन हो इंजीनियरिंग हो सर्विस इंडस्ट्री हो आईटी हो कहीं भी फाइनेंशियल सर्विस हो कहीं भी हम the new institute has been set up to provide vocational training to the region's youth as well as the country and enable them to find jobs across industries. It was established by All India Limited on the directives of Oil, Petroleum and Natural Gas Ministry. The institute, located in Uttar Fulung area of North Guwahati, will offer various training courses including those for industrial electrician, oil and gas and industrial welder, oil and gas. These courses are listed in National Qualification Registrar under Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. अगले दिनों में हमारे सिर्फ असम में नहीं उत्तर पूर्व में जितना भी हमारे नौजवान हैं उनको उत्साहित करने के लिए उनको रोजगार देने के लिए हमें मजबूत कदम उठाना ही होगा तो इस सिलसिले में उन्होंने मुझे आश्वासन दिया है जो भी कदम उठाना जरूरी है वो उठाने के लिए तैयार है Meanwhile, a Memorandum of Understanding was also signed between Assam Rifles and National Skills Development Commission to give the retiring Assam Rifles personnel a second chance to make a living based on prior learning and experience. The ceremony was attended by Pradhan at the Assam Rifles headquarters in Shillong. Terming the Northeast region as an area with much potential, Dharmendra Pradhan appreciated the hard-working nature and the honesty of the region's people. Now, according to the time, according to the need, we have to upscale their trades, their huge potential of agriculture, agroforestry, service industry. Meghalaya has a lot of potential on tourism. These are the area. Meghalaya's youth is aspiring youth. They want to go out for the earning, for the good livelihood. Lot of youth are moving away also. Before going to any destination for job war, if we can train them, if we can skill them in Meghalaya, in the Shillong, in Tura, that will be beneficial for them. 
During the event, Pradhan reiterated that an LPG bottling plant will be set up at the old depot site near Shillong soon. Pradhan said that an early review of skill development efforts across all northeastern states had already been conducted. It is worth mentioning that approximately 1,200 Assam Rifles personnel retiring annually stand to gain from this MOU. Well, viewers, moving on, weaving is an integral part of the culture of Northeast India. Designs for garments and handicrafts are often inspired by real life. However, to revive the indigenous Loinlum weaving in the state of Nagaland, the 4th International Loinlum Festival was held in the sleepy Dizefi village in Dimapur under the ages of exotic echo. Weavers from all across the state of Nagaland came together at the 4th International Loinlum Festival organized under the ages of Exotic Eco Regional Society that was held in the Slivedizefe village situated about 17 kilometers from Dimapur. Loinlum or backstrap weaving is a traditional textile weaving which is common to the tribal women folk of Northeast India. Traditionally, tribal weavers of Northeast use the weaving technique to make traditional dresses to cater to the demands of the locals and to make a living. The decade-long history of Loinlum weaving was brought back to life in the 4th International Loinlum Festival where weavers, irrespective of age, competed in the competition to see who weaved the fastest. The three-day-long festival attracted both domestic and international tourists to explore the intricately rich hand-woven outfits weaved by the Naga women on their loinlooms. All of us Naga women born and brought up by our mothers are taught the skill of traditional weaving from an early age. Over the years, we have seen that Naga women have excelled in creating designs on the Luilong with fusion of colors our grandmothers never ever dreamt of. The art of Luilong weaving is well known for its elegant designs, unique color combinations and lasting texture. The women folk were seen operating the Luilong which consists of a continuous warp stretched between two parallel bamboos. Each Naga tribe has its own color and motif that forms its distinct cultural identity like a ribs texture and stripes in black and red or black lines on white. Fabrics are woven in two parts and later stitched in the middle. Weavers from all across the state and even from abroad participated to showcase their best techniques of weaving in the fastest possible way and weave to produce some of the best designed products. I'm so happy to know that uh, this Lauren Room Festival is bringing it back to life and promoting this all over India. We hadn't heard of uh, or even known about these beautiful fabrics till we arrived here at the Lauren Room Festival. And now that we see how, with how much care and effort and love goes into these beautiful fabrics, we want to take them home promote them, show them to all our friends back home and hope that more and more people learn to appreciate and enjoy this fabric. During the festival, one side that held attention of the visitors was a demonstration of a group of elderly women spinning cotton by hand to make a special refined thread out of it. It's such a beautiful thing and the women are doing a fabulous job. Their art is unbeatable and uh, I wish them all the very best. And I'm taking a few things to share with my children because I, it's a very beautiful thing they are, they are really creating. Organizing such an interesting fest will help boost the spirit of the Naga women weavers and at the same time promote their sense of loin loom to the world and increase the market value of such hand woven items which involves intensive hard work and labor. Northeast India is blessed with rich biodiversity. The 14th edition of State Level Orange Festival 2017 was held recently in Manipur's Tamenglong to promote the practice of organic farming and create business opportunities for indigenous farmers with special emphasis on orange growers. Each year, various events and festivals are organized in the Northeast region to popularize the practice of organic farming and create a platform for locals to interact, build business contacts and promote the products in the wider markets. It was held with an aim to promote the local produce and to penetrate wider market development for income generation. 
organized by the district administration Damenglong under the team Orange the Damenglong Pride. The five-day-long festival was graced by State Minister for Horticulture and Soil Conservation Taunujam Swam Kumar at the Lower Crown. <laughs> From the expected DC, he will collect on the list of the farmers. Then only that, if you get a list of the farmer or the one, we'll discuss with the board honorable MLA of the Tamay and this of Tamenglong. More than 120 stalls are being displayed by orange crows hailing from the district and the neighboring areas. Adding another component to the festival was the Dor de Damanglong, an antivo to explore the potential tourist destinations and highlights the unexplored beauty of the region. It's the best orange in the country. But Mushri Awati, an acclaimed Hollywood playback singer, Kailash Kher and trolled the audience with his popular numbers, including Diri Divani. Here, personally, it's an experience of lifetime and uh, experience of its kind. You know, this is a world out of this world, and uh, I have immense respect now for uh, Armstrong, Palme, DC here, and the people in the entire district, coming along, and so beautiful people, very very kind and smiling, hardworking. During the festival, visitors were seen lining up to participate at the Orange Eating Competition, which was one of the most fun-filled activities of the event. Hosting the festival with special focus on creating business opportunities for local farmers will help them grow financially and will eventually improve their livelihood. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. To connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ani, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Chandra Kala. Goodbye and take care.